All right, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Timothy Bennett, and uh, I'm excited to share with you our newly launched EHR certification program for uh, EHRs that are deployed in pediatric specialty practices. I am the director of strategic healthcare initiatives at Drummond, and I am joined today by my colleague Todd Margo, Drummond's director of business development. Todd has spent the better part of two years elbows deep in uh, our, these pediatric requirements and functionality. And I know he's <clears throat> just as excited as I am to have a chance to share what we've been working on with you folks. Uh, but before we get started, a few housekeeping things. We at Drummond want you to know your attendance is greatly appreciated. This webinar is being recorded and we will have it available on our website's resource page within the next 24 hours, as well as this slide deck we are uh, presenting today. We will be taking a few questions at the end of the webinar, time permitting. Uh, feel free to submit your questions via the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen or top of the screen where you uh, sort of have the console there. Uh, any questions uh, we don't have time to answer live, we will uh, answer via in a follow-up email. Uh, with that, let's go ahead and get started. Our agenda today uh, for today's talk will begin with a little bit of background of why Drummond decided to build and launch a voluntary certification program for pediatrics. This ended up being quite an investment for Drummond, and we want you to know why we felt it was worth it. The main part of uh, today's presentation will inform you of the design structure and requirements of this new certification program. And after sharing uh, those technical details, with this being a Drummond owned and Drummond branded program, we do want to communicate the vision of the program's ongoing governance and its future expansion, uh, as it is, uh, you know, somewhat different than, uh, you know, ONC's uh, mandatory health IT program for, uh, for, uh, for health IT. Uh, finally, uh, for those interested in getting more information and or enrolling in this certification program, we'll tell you where and how uh, to do that before uh, we get into the Q&A session, uh, if there's some questions from, uh, from the audience. So why did Drummond decide to build and launch an EHR specialty practice uh, certification program uh, for, for pediatrics? Well, the answer begins with the fact that pediatric health IT is one of the unintended consequences or casualties of the uh, ONC health IT certification program, uh, particularly uh, with respect to the methods that has incentivized its adoption um, like the Medicare reimbursements and the Meaningful Use and the MIPS programs. Uh, EMRs tend to focus mainly on adult care uh, with less attention on some of the specifics of specialty practices like child health and pediatrics. Um, Congress was made aware of uh, pediatrics sort of getting left behind uh, in the push uh, to, towards digital health. And as part of their 21st Century Cures Act that was signed into law in December of 2016, Congress did commission the HHS and ONC to address this disparity, which includes the um, direction to adopt certification criteria to support health IT for, um, uh, for pediatrics. Now, ONC's response uh, to this direction from Congress in their own 21st Century Cures final rule that they published in 2020 uh, was uh, developing a set of 10 very broad stroke pediatric recommendations for the voluntary certification of health IT for pediatric care. That was their um, response. And you can see that in the Cures Act section six, I think it is. These 10 recommendations, which I'll review on the next slide, were derived from about 47 robust and detailed pediatric requirements in uh, the 2015 AHRQ publication of the Children's EHR Format Report, 
which is sort of broadly regarded as the seminal clinical resource of pediatric health IT functionality. ONC chose not to create a separate certification program for pediatrics, as well as choosing not to add any distinguishing marks to developers' chapel listings that implementing uh, these, uh, these 10 recommendations. Um, however, ONC did associate or link these 10 pediatric uh, recommendations to their existing health IT uh, certification criteria, essentially, you know, saying that if health IT developers, you know, were to implement these, uh, uh, these criteria in a pediatric centric way, they could claim a voluntary pediatric certification. It's unclear if a developer's self claim of supporting these 10 recommended, uh, recommended pediatric fun functions mean very much in the marketplace um, uh, for, you know, a myriad of reasons. Um, instead, ONC adopted or opted for a sort of more nimble approach and a non-regulatory uh, uh, approach and methods for this voluntary certification. They did develop some um, informational resources, which provided a little bit more detail onto what they were thinking around pediatric uh, criteria, even linking some of those back to the children's EHR format. Uh, these resources were for uh, developers and providers as um, you know, reference material. Uh, and you know, ONC sort of did leave space, um, as I mentioned in, uh, earlier about section six and their peers final rule, uh, for industry to address uh, voluntary pediatric uh, certification. So these are the 10 uh, recommended uh, pediatric func functions um, that, uh, that ONC had in their, their, their final rule. Um, you know, not to say that these, uh, that these uh, 10 recommendations aren't important or valid, they, they very much are. And you know, some have you know, heralded uh, as a good first start uh, to shine the spotlight on child health and EHRs. Uh, many folks, including uh, industry leaders like incoming president of the AAP, Dr. Sandy Chung, who uh, confirm uh, that these recommendations address some of the important pediatric issues like growth charts, weight and age-based dosing, documentation of guardians and caregivers, immunization history, you know, tracking of incomplete uh, uh, preventative care opportunities. These are, you know, among the things that you can see there in, in ONC's re recommended 10. Um, but as Dr. Chung goes on to say, the key next step for health IT products to, is to adopt these recommendations and obtain voluntary certification. And this, this quote was actually before Drummond even launched our, our own pediatric certification program. So it's kind of been out there, um, you know, as, as the, you know, some of the key next steps. But, you know, what we think here at Drummond is without prescriptive rigor and a certification program to confirm a standard level of adoption and support, it leaves both providers and developers uh, with a certain number of challenges. So while there's appreciation for ONC's response, um, you know, to the 21st Century Cures Act that Congress passed, uh, Drummond believed that the response, uh, that this response sort of falls short in defining a necessary level of pediatric functionality and uh, leaves a formal and meaningful regulatory uh, certification for pediatrics in, in limbo. Ultimately, pediat pediatric clinicians do not have a transparent way to compare pediatric support across EHRs in the marketplace. And at least, you know, I think health IT developers with some confusion as to what is necessary pediatric support and leaves them with really no tangible way to, you know, independently differentiate their pediatric functionality in the marketplace. So this is a point where Drummond uh, stepped into the gap and decided to build and launch our own branded voluntary pediatric certification program. We did this because we feel pediatrics deserved better 
uh, the child health outcomes deserve better, that both clinicians and, and, and uh, providers and developers deserve, you know, something better. And so with that, our goal with this certification program is to do something that helps pediatricians improve children's health. Now, there's certainly pediatric EHRs out there uh, uh, today that do that already, um, but, we, but we felt you know, there was a need to sort of, uh, you know, standardize that so that, you know, it could raise all boats in the, uh, you know, in the EHR space. So the, the goal here for us was not to just build a, a certification program that, uh, that looked at certifying these uh, ONC 10 recommendations, although that is part of our program. Our goal here was to develop a, a set of pediatric requirements uh, done through consensus with experts, I'll get into that in a, in, a, in, a, in a minute, that moves the needle on pediatric support across the board among EHRs. And so to that end, Drummond uh, recruited an advisory panel of pediatric clinical experts, EHR developers, other PED stakeholders, to, and we returned to that 2015 AHR Q uh, children's EHR format uh, document. And so, uh, so, so under the guidance of this expert panel, we set about deconstructing and reconstructing these requirements into essentially an updated set of child health functions derived heavily from that children's EHR format, but then with, um, you know, a little bit of a, uh, you know, five, six, seven years later, um, you know, uh, revisit of those, uh, of those requirements. And in fact, um, you know, as we worked through that work and we saw, um, you know, the value of it, uh, Drummond donated, um, you know, these requirements development work to HL7. And earlier this year, uh, there was a new uh, document uh, published at HL7 um, for an updated pediatric health IT functional profile. That hadn't been done in uh, many years, I think uh, uh, maybe, you know, 2008 or so. Um, so our analysis uh, process with the advisory panel, um, as I mentioned, we developed these set of conformance statements across about 15 or so pediatric key pediatric topical categories that you can, you know, see there on the right. I'm not going to read through all of them, but these are, you know, key areas uh, that a pediatric EHR should, you know, should address functionality for. Um, my colleague Todd is going to go a little deeper in a few minutes with this, but the result was about, you know, 200 testable, uh, you know, criteria that, uh, pediatric criteria that, um, uh, that we came up with. This summer, um, this past summer, we recruited three leading ambulatory pediatric EHRs to pilot our program artifacts, provide feedback, and help us tweak the program ahead of uh, our official launch uh, that was on uh, October 4th, um, earlier last month. Uh, our program was also reviewed by a leading children's hospital to provide some feedback from an inpatient pediatrics uh, perspective and uh, you know, get some of uh, that unique provider and clinical input. All right, so uh, my colleague Todd and I, we're, we're now, uh, now that we sort of got that out of the way as to why Drummond did this and how we sort of set up developing this program, uh, we're gonna go into a little bit more detail now on um, sort of the output of that, which was the program's design and structure. So there's several main aspects of Drummond's pediatric certification program. First, we, uh, we thought it was important to build off of ONC's health IT certification program. Uh, certainly the, uh, you know, the recommended 10 is part of that. Um, and, and so to that end, there is a subset of ONC certified criteria that is required for an EHR uh, to have certified in order to gain a Drummond pediatric certification. I'll show those criteria you know, on the next slide so that, you know, you guys will be able to take a look at what the prerequisites are from that standpoint. Second, we also built the program with two tracks in mind. 
recognizing that there are some different requirements in the ambulatory setting versus the inpatient setting. There is overlap, of course, but uh, there's also some very um, uh, interesting and necessary differences. And so our program allows health IT products to certify to one or both of, the, of these tracks. Finally, we, uh, we also recognize that all, not all of these pediatrics conformance requirements are, are sort of, uh, so to speak, uh, created equal. Some of these requirements, these conformance statements, um, you know, represent mandatory baseline functionality um, that all EHRs deployed in a pediatric setting, uh, you know, must support and pass. Uh, but we also recognize that there are other pediatric requirements that represent advanced or more robust functionality, sometimes built on top of mandatory uh, requirements or sometimes just, uh, you know, some uh, edge or bleeding edge, uh, you know, pediatric uh, functionality. Uh, and as such, um, we sort of set those aside in, an op in a set of optional advanced uh, achievements. Uh, th these advanced achievements are designed to further differentiate health IT products with respect to the level of their pediatric support. We'll go into that uh, a little bit uh, more um, in, in, in the presentation, but uh, essentially they are bundled together into these badges um, that are scored on a scale of uh, one to five. Uh, this encourages health IT to go above and beyond the baseline functionality requirements and also sort of um, it kind of uh, is different than just a, a, a pass fail sort of uh, scoring. So as I um, as I said before, um, you know, I did want to throw up the list of the ONC certified criteria that are essentially prerequisites to getting a Drummond. Uh, EHR pediatric certification. I just want to reiterate and just be clear that uh, a health IT product must be ONC certified uh, to get to add on a Drummond pediatric certification. This list you see here represents that subset of ONC criteria that qualifies an EHR for Drummond ped certification. So we're not requiring everyone to, you know, uh, uh, be certified to all of ONC's criteria, just um, you know, just these um, uh, subset. Now, most of these criteria, or many of these criteria, are um, are so, sort of ONC's own own mapping of their criteria to their uh, ONC 10 pediatric recommendations that they had in the Cures Rule. Um, and you know these include uh, like clinical decision support, family history, e-prescribing, uh, the view, download, transmit, immunization registries, um, with the remainder sort of just being uh, you know criteria that uh, you know mostly all HRs have to support in order to get an ONC certification. So at, at this point. Um, you know, I'll turn over the presentation to my colleague, uh, Todd Margo. He's going to go over some of the details of the program's designs and structure and how we've built this new testing and certification program. So, uh, Todd. I'll... Thanks, Tim. <clears throat> to move into a little bit deeper technical detail about the program, Tim mentioned previously that we ended up with about 200 technical requirement statements across a set of clinical topic areas. And so on this slide, I just wanted to give you a couple of examples of the, uh, of the criteria statements. And this should be straightforward. Anyone who's ever been involved with writing re requirement statements or understanding them for the purpose of developing health IT technology. We, we, um, we, we chose a simple strategy of if a mandatory requirement would use the, the verb shall and an advanced requirement would, would use the word should. So it made it easy for us to segment the requirements into the baseline criteria versus the requirements that would be tested as part of advanced badges. So in this example on the slide here, we've got two shells and one should. And if you look at the first example, it's in the area of newborn screening follow-up. And the idea is that the EHR would capture the fact that a patient has at least one abnormal screening result. And so we want the pediatrician to act on that promptly. So it should get put on the problem list. In the second example, 
The EHR is used to report on patients due or overdue for well child visits, and the requirement around filters can help drill down on this. For example, a practice might want to understand how their younger Hispanic patients are doing with respect to well child visit compliance to identify potential disparities in care. In the third example, we can consider this actually an advanced extension of the second example, and it's, it moves into the area of continuous process improvement, where the EHR can help a practice with overall well child visit compliance performance over time. The next slide, please. I think it's one up from that term. Yeah. Yes. Sorry about that. Yeah. So after we had gathered all these technical requirements that we just had like this big long list of 200 requirements in, in, that are organized into these topic areas, but we wanted to do something that made the testing more interesting. And the, the idea here, which is the, distinctly different from what you'll see in the ONC program, what we wanted to do here was actually relate those requirements to real world situations. And so we created this concept of clinical workflows at a high level, and we uh, separated them into inpatient versus ambulatory workflows, as you see here. And there's, of course, some commonality across the two. So that's at the highest level. We have this concept of clinical workflows, and it's really just a grouping concept. So think of it that way. Uh, next slide, Tim. And then uh, at a next level down, we implemented a, another concept called test scenarios. And so on this uh, slide here, you're seeing an ex excerpt of a of a report that we make available to developer, developers who are interested in looking at the program and, and seeing uh, if they're evaluating whether they wanna get, get tested and certified. And this is called the testing structure report. And so what you see here is you see the workflows listed and then uh, within each workflow, there's one or more test scenarios. And it's really within the test scenarios where we're testing the technical criteria within the context of those test scenarios. This report, by the way, is generated from an application that Drummond built to support the program, a sort of requirements management system that we put together. Um, and let me emphasize that it's just an excerpt. There's really about 30 test scenarios altogether across those um, or 15 or so clinical workflows. So let's look at one example in a little bit more detail. And, at the top of the slide, you'll see circled a test scenario around the adolescence well child checkup. And uh, these well child visits, uh, these test scenarios for the well child visit workflow, they're basically following the AAP's Bright Futures periodicity schedule, if you're familiar with that, for the major age groups. And I've circled the, the, the adolescent one so that we can look at that in, in next, another level of detail. Next slide, Tim. So here we see, um, we crafted a clinical narrative and, and we've done this for every test scenario. So when you're evaluating your product against, uh, against the, the program itself, you can look at these narratives and see what the intent is ultimately for certain requirements. And we are, we're testing the requirements within a particular clinical narrative. That clinical narrative will have test data associated with it and so on. Um, but in this particular case, we're talking about a teen and depression screening, and it's not just any teen, it's one that has recently obtained emancipated minor status. And there's some implications of that situation, such that the teen, for example, can now consent for their own medical care, and they can request things like that their guardians be removed from access to their patient portal. So you don't see all of the requirements associated with this test scenario on this slide just because of what we ran out of real estate, but, but there are specific technical requirements about everything that's talked about in the clinical narrative. Uh, next slide, please. As Tim mentioned previously, there is a, a, a key notion of the program, which is these advanced achievement badges. We wanted to make the testing more interesting and valuable to both the health IT community and the user community. And so we've introduced this notion of these badges. And we also think it's gonna help vendors distinguish their products in the marketplace. Each advanced badge has associated with it one or more advanced requirements. Typically there is a set of advanced requirements for any particular badge. 
And then when a developer signs up for the program, they can examine the advanced requirements for any of these badges, and then they can decide which, decide which ones they want to be evaluated for. Then when we are testing a vendor's product, we'll actually score, score the advanced requirements for a particular advanced badge. And we'll give, will ultimately result in an overall rating um, that's normalized on a scale from one to five. And then that, that number's published with the seal that the vendor receives for that advanced badge. Uh, next slide, Tim. So I wanted to give you a little visual sense of what these seals look like for the base certification and these badges. And you can see on the left at the bottom, Tim had mentioned before that, we, that you can get a base certification in ambulatory or inpatient. And, and if you have products that support both settings, you can get certifications for, for both of those settings. And then beyond these mandatory seals, we have the advanced badges and, the, and, and they're listed here. And you can see that most of them, there's a couple of cases where they are not scored, uh, but most of the cases they are scored from one to five and we'll, we'll show that score on the seal. So for example, uh, you see medication management and it has a score of three and well child care as a score of four. Well, that, that happens to be the scoring for this hypothetical vendor for those advanced badges. Now with that, I think I'll turn it back over to Tim for some closing remarks on program governance and future expansion. Yeah, thanks, Todd. Um, so, um, uh, this, um, you know, Drummond's Pediatric Certification Program uh, is modeled after our ONC Testing Certification Program, and so it will be familiar. That will, some aspects of this was going to be familiar to to many of you here on the call. Like our ONC program, uh, this program will um, uh, require a an admin fee as part of enrollment process. Um, and it will be, uh, let's see, my, yeah, I think I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm on the wrong slide. Let me kind of go back here. Um, so as far as uh, governance and evolution of our program, uh, Drummond will, um, you know, we, we are leveraging our existing ATL and ACB, which has been, you know, involved in certification testing for over a decade now. Uh, and um, we know at Drummond that this is our strength. This is um, the thing that we're very good at, uh, managing, running certification programs. And, you know, if there's an industry organization to step up and offer a, uh, a special EHR certification uh, to the marketplace, we don't believe, you know, anyone is more qualified to do that than Drummond. Um, so this, as I mentioned before, this is a Drummond owned and branded program and we will, and as Todd, you know, kind of went through, you know, the requirements that were developed as part of this, we are going to own, um, you know, those, um, you know, we're going to own those, uh, you know, those requirements. We will also maintain a uh, a certified product list on our website uh, that's going to be open and accessible to the public so anyone can review the level of pediatric functionality supported um, you know by the products that we certify and you know you know we did spend upwards of two years developing these uh, re requirements under the expert guidance of our advisory panel and as I mentioned before, we're going to continue to own those requirements, the structure of our testing, uh, and and the certification program. You know, this program is a living and breathing program. That is to say, we you know we intend and expect the program's mandatory and advanced uh, requirements to evolve over time. And to that end, just as we relied on, um, you know, our uh, advisory panel during the development of the program. We're going to continue to rely on a steering committee that is comprised of a number of external uh, stakeholders in the pediatric space um, that are, will continue to inform and guide us on the future development of the program. 
We've already recruited these members of the st steering uh, committee from professional organizations like the AAP, from leading pediatric practitioners and clinicians from both uh, children's hospitals, medical schools, and ambulatory practices, and also from uh, the health IT uh, developer community. Uh, the, this committee will meet for the first time in the first quarter of 2023. And, you know, our vision here is that this committee will ensure that Drummond has the necessary clinical and implementation oversight to help us achieve our goals. As I mentioned before, pushing the needle on improving child health outcomes, making this program relevant um, and, and having real world uh, relevancy. Um, so we don't think that we can um, do service to this, you know, without, uh, you know, that kind of oversight and guidance, you know, from uh, the steering committee. Now, as we uh, start to wrap up the webinar, uh, for those of you that are interested in finding out more information uh, or want to register and enroll, um, I'll give you the details now. Um, <laughs> as I started uh, saying earlier, uh, this, this program, at, uh, this pediatric certification program at Drummond is modeled after our ONC certification program. Uh, so it's gonna be familiar to you know, many of you out there. Um, it'll have a, uh, admin fee uh, that's part of the enrollment process, uh, but that administration fee is uh, credited to you um, after your final testing. Uh, and, um, you know, uh, you know, also like our ONC uh, testing program, the live testing uh, or the testing fee for the live sessions is based on uh, sort of a, a time based. Um, algorithm uh, priced at uh, full or half days of, of testing. Now, to manage the cost of the certification program for our customers, yet also, you know, maintain a thorough and rigorous program, um, like we said, that, you know, really matters, that, that, you know, seeks to move the needle on improving child health. Testing uh, will consist of a combination of live proctored test sessions, along with some developer self-testing and attestations, which uh, will then be reviewed um, you know, by, uh, by a test proctor uh, for compliance. So as far as the live testing uh, part of, of, of the program, we are designing that to, on average, take about a day and a half of live testing. Um, and, you know, like all of our certification programs, um, enrollees will have an account manager, uh, proctor assigned to them so that, um, you know, that's their technical resource to assist them in understanding the requirements and, you know, preparing for testing and certification, just shepherding, you know, them through the entire, uh, you know, process. But unlike the ONC testing program, uh, Drummond, you know, we have decided uh, that our pediatrics program does require cert uh, certificate holders to retest and recertify every two years in order to maintain their pediatrics certification. We want to make sure that the Drummond certified program continues to push that needle to help pediatricians improve child health outcomes. And, um, you know, as I mentioned, you know, we, we certainly in, intend and envision for there to be additional advanced achievements and requirements, and uh, that this biennial recertification will encourage developers to improve the robustness of their, you know, pediatric functions. So if you're interested in the certification program, all you have to do is just uh, send an email to us at peds at drummergroup.com. And, um, you know, we'll get back with you and, uh, and, and, and help walk you through uh, the next steps, answering questions you might have. And speaking of questions, uh, that brings us to the end of our prepared presentation. We'd, you know, we'd love to address any questions you may have submitted during the webinar. You can submit them now, uh, you know, using the Q&A or the chat function. Um, so, uh, Olga, did we, uh, do we have any questions that came in? 
So prior to the webinar, we had a few questions. And one of them, the first one we got was, do you have to show proof of ONC certification to enroll in this program? So not to enroll. Um, you do have to show proof that you are certified to those ONC criteria that we presented uh, earlier in the in the presentation uh, before you get the ONC uh, certification. So I would imagine many folks coming to the drama and pediatrics certification will be, you know, bringing their ONC certification with them already that they've had. Uh, in that sense, uh, you know, we'll just kind of check off and make sure that uh, you're meeting the prerequisite requirements. Uh, if there's gaps, then uh, you could certainly address those at that time by, um, you know, uh, sort of certifying the ones that you don't have. For health IT products that might not uh, be yet certified to, to, uh, to the uh, ONC uh, health IT program, um, you know, we can help you get, you know, get certified, but that, that doesn't mean you can't go ahead and start testing and, 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 and be enrolled in the pediatrics program. Just at some point, you know, down the road, both have to be in place before you get that uh, PED certification. Hopefully that answers that question. Okay. The second question we got was how much extra do the advanced achievement badges cost? Um, so there's really no quote unquote additional charges for doing, uh, you know, getting an advanced badge, all of the testing, whether it's part of the mandatory requirements or the advanced badges, uh, you know, the testing fees, at least for the live portions, uh, of, of, of those, of, of those test sessions or test events, um, you know, it's just uh, the fee is just based on how many days or half days it takes you to test. So, um, you know, you can you get you can. Uh, so there's no, there's no there's no differentiating cost between the mandatory and the and the advanced. It's all just part of your time it takes to do the testing. Okay, and then I have a two part question. Is the last one I got? Is there a sandbox? or testing tool to prepare for certification? And how will I know if there are gaps in my product? Uh, that kind of sounds like a, a bit of a testing structure question. Todd, do you want to handle that one maybe? Yeah, I'll take that, Tim. Um, there isn't a sandbox uh, or tool per se, but what we would uh, do or is, uh, is offer the, the, uh, that testing structure report that you saw an excerpt from in the slide presentation. And that's, that's going to give you a description of all of the clinical workflows, all of the test scenarios, and all of the technical requirements that, that can be tested for the entire program. And from that, you can understand what are the baseline requirements. And then you can also understand what the advanced requirements are so that you can pick and choose which ones of those you want to be evaluated for. Okay, that's all I've got so far. All right. Well, with that in, in mind, we'll we'll wrap up the webinar. Um, just thank everyone for attending, and um, you know, obviously, uh, if you have any questions about this program, uh, as I mentioned before. Uh, just send us, drop us an email at peds at drummagroup.com and, um, you know, and then basically enjoy the rest of your week. And again, thanks for attending.